Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University and issue number three of Lockjaw. Uh, this is, look, uh, the first comic bothered me. Second comic book had me on a high. This third comic book, I'm not quite as high, but yeah, I'm, let's just say I'm, I'm smoking something. <laughs> That's not, could you imagine? As giddy as I am regular, if I actually smoked, oh, for crane at lead. Anyway, look, check this out. The comic book basically um, situates everybody in one of the Amazing Spider-Ham's universes. Uh, there is a guy here named Mr. Moose-tastic, <laughs> like uh, Mr. Fantastic or Mooster fantastic whatever the heck it is, it's hysterical. I was dying. I was practically holding my sides when I'm sitting here reading this. It's really good stuff. And we've also got uh, another one of Lockjaw's siblings. So now we're, the story's starting to come around and Lockjaw is sending his siblings out to different places for different reasons we're not entirely sure why. But uh, Annihilus is trying to hunt them all down. And he's actually looking for the real Reed Richards, the real Fantastic Four. He wants to kill them. And <laughs> basically, uh, Lockjaw seems to be at the precipice of all of this, of saving the Fantastic Four, which makes sense because he was introduced in the pages of Fantastic Four. Look, when push comes to shove, I'm surprised and impressed that some serious stuff was actually able to be slipped in such a ridiculous comic book. And I mean ridiculous in the most loving of ways. There's so much silly stuff in here, it's wild. Uh, on top of that, there's a surprise ending in here. Well, not a surprise ending, a surprise appearance at the very end. And yes, I was informed by my Eye of Agamotto that uh, he read this before I actually uh, uh, checked that out. If you want to actually meet my Eye of Agamotto, come to my Saturday podcast at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. They're live. It's a live cast right here on YouTube. Anyway, so um, yeah, uh, at the very end, Sleepwalker shows up, and he's got his dog, the, the dog walker, which, oh, really, we're doing this? Are we really doing this? This was a fun comic book. This was a fun comic book, and it's just funny that Sleepwalker's here since I just got finished uh, reading one of the tie-ins for uh, Infinity Gauntlet, which actually had Sleepwalker in it. And he was just walking a dog the entire time because his human host was one of the people who disappeared while he was sleeping. So, yeah, really weird coincidence just, you know, for me, for me personally. Anyway, this was pretty good. I'm going to give this a B plus. I'm enjoying this comic book for exactly what it is. It's a funny book. The next issue is actually supposed to give us the um, the an inkling onto... The, the true origin of Lockjaw. Now, I am a little bit worried about that. I got to be honest. I got to speak from the heart, all right? A lot of people, and some of them with very good reason, some of them with really dorky reasons, worried that Marvel is trying to uh, set an agenda. I, I don't necessarily see an agenda being pushed uh, uh, so much as just an equal opportunity uh, type of, of, of mentality. Uh, it's a very progressive mentality. It's not a far, far, far left mentality. Progressive has a, a, a bad name to it, and I just don't see that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I myself consider myself part progressive, part liberal. So I don't, uh, liberal, libertarian, excuse me, huge difference there. Um, so yeah, no, I just, I'm not seeing that at all. I enjoy it. But at the same time, it's really hard to defend Marvel and it's not my job to defend Marvel. They don't give me a paycheck. They can defend themselves. But it's really hard for me to, to disagree with people when everybody's being made gay, so to speak. So when, yeah, uh, when Demolition Man <laughs> was, <laughs> when he, I've never seen him reveal himself as gay before. I, at least I don't recall it, okay? Either way, the end of issue one, when all sounds like, oh, yeah, he's gay. He's very gay. He's looking at Kazar like that. I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I expect to see Jean Grey over there going, you're gay. Because, like, what the frig? <laughs> So it is what it is, and they seem to have moved away from it. Look, I'm okay with the character being gay, but s just stop. Just stop. If you don't know what I mean, you're not going to know what I mean, and I think it's a false not knowing what I mean. Just please just tell good stories. Right now, they're leaving the gay thing aside. I don't care about somebody's personal bedroom life. I hated growing up, honestly, like I hate the idea that I grew up with comic book characters being sex symbols, all of them. It's ridiculous, and I don't want to think about that in my 40s reading a comic book. So I'm glad that they're stepping away from that. Uh, Kibble Smith is doing a fantastic job on this comic book right now. Stay the course, and don't give me a stupid origin for Lockjaw. He is a dog who underwent terogenesis. Don't try and make him a human. Please don't do that. It's already been established that he's a dog. I'm going to let it go at that. 
Professor Bell, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.